Don't forget to join me on Saturday morning for Saturday morning yoga. Get everyone at home together and enjoy some family time. Remember, subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss one. I'll see you Saturday. Hello everyone. Today we're going to sit and stretch by doing some seated yoga. So find yourself a chair to sit in and come to sit, if you can, at the front of it so that your back's nice and straight. Make sure you've got some space around you and your feet are flat on the ground. Bring your hands onto your lap. Right, let's begin by warming up our necks. Looking over one shoulder, looking over the other, looking over one shoulder and looking over the other. Bring your head back to the centre and now tick your head one way and tock it the other. Tick it and tock it. This time keep it over this side and take your hand up and over your head so that it rests a little bit on your ear. You don't need to press too hard, just let it sit there just to add a little bit of weight and help your neck stretch a little bit more. Lovely. Lower your hand all the way down and then come over to the other side. Take your hand up and over, placing it on your ear, just to give it that little bit of extra weight so that you can enjoy that stretch down your neck. Nice. Release your arm and now slowly drop your chin to your chest. Roll your head all the way around one way and all the way around the other way. Nice. And come back to the centre. Now our necks are warm, let's do our shoulders. We roll our shoulders round and round. Lift them up and put them down. Lift up one, lift up two, put down one, put down two. Going up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Lovely, now our shoulders are all warm. Now, let's pretend that we've got a backpack on and we need to get something out. So we reach up one of our arms and we drop it down towards our back. Mm, we can't quite reach it, so we take our other arm up and over the top to press our elbow down so that we can get in there a bit further. <laughs> no good, so we lower our arms all the way down. Let's try with the other side. Reach your other arm up and drop it down into your back. Take your other arm up and over and press your elbow down. Try and keep your neck nice and long. That's it. Oh, we've got it. We bring it out. Oh, it's a beach ball, but it's a little bit deflated. Needs to be blown up. We cup our hands around our mouth and we blow our beach ball all the way up. Wow! This was a bigger beach ball than I thought. It's starting to float up into the sky. We tether it to our chair. Now it can carry us up. We're flying. Let's have a look over the sides, everyone. Sitting up nice and tall. Twist yourself around one way. And if you've got an arm on your chair, you can hold your arm. Otherwise, take hold of the back of your chair. Sit up tall and twist and have a look. Keep your feet flat on the ground. <gasps> look, over there, we can see our house and our family. Let's give them a wave. Hi house, hi family. Now come back to the middle. Let's have a look on the other side. Sit up nice and tall and then twist yourself all the way round to maybe hold the back of your chair. That's it. Keep your feet planted and have a look. <gasps> look. There's our school, our friends, and the park. Give them a wave. Hi, everybody. Brilliant. We turn back to the front. Now, let's look through our cosmonoculars and see where we're going. Joining your thumbs and fingers together, have a look through. Wow, we can see a bright horizon. The sun in the sky, the clouds, it's beautiful. 
Now lowering your cosmonoculars down. I wonder if we can do the crazy cosmonocular face mask. Let's try. Bring your fingers up again, joining your thumbs and fingers together. Now take these three fingers and put them under your jaw, bringing your pinky finger to where your cheek meets your jaw. Now lift your elbows and lift up your cosmonocular holes so that you can see through them the upside down way. Yes, we're wearing our cosmonocular face mask. And the future is bright. Amazing. Lowering your arms all the way down. We crisscross our fingers and we lift them up and back behind our heads. We lean back in our chair and we close our eyes as our chair floats us up into the sky. We feel so peaceful and clear ready to take this lovely peaceful feeling into the next thing we're doing. We've landed. Coming up to sit again everyone. We're here and we're feeling fresh and ready. Well done everyone. Everyone, welcome to the Cosmic Kids Zen Den, your place to feel all calm and relaxed and to help our minds stay healthy and happy. First, let's get comfy. Sitting on our bottoms with our legs crossed, we take two nice deep breaths in through our nose and out through our mouth. And again, in through our nose and out through our mouth. <sighs> hmm. Now let's get the Zen Den ready so we can really enjoy it. Let's fill it with colour. Wow, lots of great colours to choose from. Let's pick one that helps us feel all lovely and calm. Hmm. This lovely blue looks good. Let's have that. And what about another colour? Shall we have one more? OK, let's add this sunny yellow colour. That's it. Now for the smell. Ooh, these look interesting. Pineapple smell. Ooh. Pizza smell. Mmm. Ah, yes. Let's smell the lemon. Mmm. Lemon is a good bright smell and helps us concentrate. Now, here's a question for you. On a scale of 1 to 10, how good do you think you are at listening? With 1 not being very good and 10 being the best in the world. OK, so lots of you reckon you're pretty good, some not so much, and some are the masters of listening. Well, if you're that good, maybe you're really Spider-Man. Have you heard about spidey senses? Hmm? Well, let's now play a special game to see how good we are at listening and how strong our spidey senses are. It's time to activate our listening. So, keep your hands resting on your knees. Make your back long and strong so you are switched on and ready. Now listen for when you hear the bell. The sound will then fade until it's gone. I want to see how long you can hear the sound of the bell ringing. And when you can't hear it any longer, move your hands from your knees into your lap. 
then I'll be able to see how long you could hear the bell and how good your listening was. Ready? Let's take our hands onto our knees. And if you want, you can also close your eyes so you're totally focused on your listening. So, here comes the sound of the bell. Well, that was a good start. You're already showing how good you are at listening. Let's try it again. Ready? Hands back to knees. Cool, that was even better than the first time. Great listening, everyone. Let's do one more, one last time, to see if we can stretch those spidey senses a little more and do our best listening yet. Ready? Hands to knees, and here we go. Was the best one. Now you've proven just how great your listening skills can be. Your spider sense is activated. Next time you are trying to learn something from the teacher or someone is telling you something, see if you can activate your listening as well as you did just now in our game and notice how much more you can hear. Well done you. Remember, you can always play this Send End video again if you want to have another go. Keep up the practice until you become a true Cosmic Kids Send End Master. I'll see you soon. Bye bye! Welcome to the Cosmic Kids Zen Den. This is where we spend a little time looking at our minds so we can be healthy and happy in our lives. First, let's get comfy. Sitting on our bottoms with our legs crossed, bring your hands to your knees and take a big deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. <sighs> Lovely. Now, let's get the Zen Den ready so we can really enjoy it. Let's get some sounds going. Ooh, yes. Look at all these lovely sounds. Lots of brilliant ones to choose from. Let's pick a couple that help us feel all lovely and relaxed. Look, a piano tune. Let's have that. Oh, and a soft singing bowl. That's a lovely mix. Now for a smell. Oh, wow. Look at these. What a fun set of things. Coffee smell. Ooh, wow. French fries. Mmm, that'll make us hungry. Ah, yes. Let's go for the lemon. That gives us a boost of energy and really wakes us up. Today, we're going to talk about the owl and the guard dog. A really interesting way of understanding our brains. But first, I'm going to share a story about something that happened to me when I was 11 years old. At school, I was put into the top set for maths. I was very excited because it meant I would be with my friends. I also felt a bit proud that my teachers thought I was clever enough to be in set one. The hardest thing for me in those maths classes was when Mrs Barfield, my teacher, used to write a problem or an equation up on the board. She would just put it up there and then give us a few minutes to work on it. No explanation or anything. For some reason, 
Whenever she did this, my brain would freeze. I would get into a panic and huff and puff at being made to do it. And I'd even blame Mrs Barfield for being a bad teacher because I found it so difficult. I once even asked to go to the bathroom just so I could get out of there. I got so uptight that I certainly wasn't able to work out the maths problem. Have you ever had this? Where something happens that makes you sort of freeze, so you can't even think straight? Well, don't worry. It's quite normal. And it's because of how your brain works. You see, our brain is really clever. But above all, it's trying to protect us. It's always on guard in case anything happens that might be dangerous so that it can help us stay safe. There's a special part of the brain which sniffs everything out that we're sensing to decide whether it's okay or if it's a serious threat. It's called the amygdala. Or as I like to call it in your brain, your guard dog. If your guard dog notices something and thinks, hold on a minute, this is scary and dangerous and I don't like it, it'll get your body ready so that you can protect yourself. It gets you ready to fight or it tells you to run away or it makes you freeze. Now, our guard dog doesn't always get it right. It can get carried away, which is what happened in my maths class. The problem Mrs Barfield wrote on the board wasn't really life-threatening, but my guard dog decided it was. So I froze. I wanted to fight. I even wanted to leave. I felt stupid and embarrassed that I was in a class where I couldn't understand. So the guard dog in my brain started barking loudly and running around protecting me. This makes it impossible for the part of my brain which can solve maths problems to get involved. This part is called the prefrontal cortex, right up here at the front. Or as I like to call it, your owl. Owls are wise, you see. They're thoughtful and good at thinking about things. Had I been able to calm my guard dog down, my owl might have had a chance at solving that maths problem. Or if it couldn't solve it, it would have shown me how to ask Mrs Barfield for some help. Instead, my guard dog had taken over and was making me panic, so my poor owl didn't get a look in. Maybe you can think of a time when your guard dog caused you to react in a way that didn't really help you. A time when your clever, wise owl didn't get the chance to help you out. Your guard dog was too busy trying to protect you, even though you didn't really need it to. So you were fighting or freezing or running away. So, what can you do about that jumpy guard dog? What would a Zen Den master do to get it all under control? Well, Here's something you can try the next time you feel your guard dog taking over. First, see if you can just notice him starting to get upset. Do you feel yourself want to run away? Do you feel the urge to start arguing or fighting? Or do you feel like you're frozen to the spot and you don't know what to do? These are the warning signs of it taking over. It happens to all of us. Actually, it's trying to keep us safe. The key is what do you do now? The best tool I know is called the Magic 10. With the Magic 10, you count from 10 down to 1, giving your brain some magic time to be calm and process what's going on before you say or do anything. Even if you've started to fight already, rather than carrying on, step back and take a magic 10. Let's see what this does to our guard dog. Count with me now from 10. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. Two, one. There. Can you see how he's less worried now? 
who's happier. And so our lovely owl can get a chance to help us work out what to do. Of course, your guard dog is very important. He is there to save your life. If there is a real threat, like a fire, or you get lost, or you need to rescue someone, your guard dog will make sure that you make things happen until you're safe again. But sometimes he can just cause a great big fuss over nothing that isn't helpful. It's good to know, isn't it? I wish I had known about my guard dog when I was 11 in my maths class. I might have been able to get some help. And maths would have been much more fun for me. And Mrs Barfield. Hopefully understanding your brain in this way will help you know why you react in certain ways. And with the magic 10, you now have a good way of calming your guard dog and making some space for your wise owl to help you think clearly. Well done for listening and learning about your brain here in the Zen Den. You're on your way to becoming a true Cosmic Kids Zen Den Master. Bye-bye!